Hi, podcast listeners, Brittany and Marie here, hosts of The Property Management Show. Today's guest is Will Gunati from Next Coder. It's a software company based in Texas, and for the past 30 years, Will has been working in um, you know, enterprise computing. And today, we're going to talk to him about workflow automation. If automating your workflow processes is something that interests you, definitely stick around. This will be a show to listen to. Hi, podcast listeners. If you're watching the video, you may notice that we have new faces. So we have here Michael Washington, the COO of Four and Half, and we have on the line Will Gunadi from Next Coder. So you may or may not have seen Michael's blogs about workflows and how it's relevant to the property management industry and how to use it basically as a business owner. Be sure to check that out because today, we're going to take it a step further and talk about workflow automation with wonderful Will. Okay, so hi Will, thank you so much for making time for us today. Hi all, thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, and so to start things off, um, let's go with the basics. Can you please explain, just in layman's terms, what is workflow automation? Okay, uh, workflow automation. Uh, first of all, uh, let's, let's break it down. And uh, let, let's talk about what workflow is. Okay, in in, in our mind, uh, workflow is just a series of steps. So it's just a, you know a basket of steps, if you will. And the most uh, the most important part of this that uh, the steps in the workflow are something that is repeated again and again and again and again, which is why uh, this particular uh, topic is very relevant to property management industry because if you think about it. They, you know, their their the whole operation is full of these workflows, things that are repeated again and again and again and again. So, for example, um, tenants moving out, right? Uh, for every properties that, you know, for that that happens, you know, you have to repeat the same steps again and again and again. So, therefore, it makes sense to put an effort to automate uh, the workflow in a way that makes sense. So that's kind of like the nutshell of what workflow automation is. Yeah, thank you so much for explaining that. Um, so, you know, a couple of terminologies that sometimes get floated around. Um, so what would you say is the difference between, you know, workflow management versus mm -hmm. business process management versus robotic process automation? Oh, Big wow. terms, but yeah. are they the same? <laughs> are they different? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that that that's that's an interesting question. The uh, I think workflow management is is is, is a discipline in itself, right? Um, it, it's a study or a, a, you know or, or some you know uh, teachings about how to manage workflows. What we are talking about here is more like workflow automation, which strangely I think it is a combination of BPM, which is business process management, and what is called you know robotic you know process automation. Um, for example, right, uh, and this is, you know, we have this even before the term, you know, robotic anything, you know, becomes cool, right? Um, we have in our uh, system uh, a lot of uh, little programs and scripts that execute steps, um, in, you know, uh, regularly. So um, we call it internally like the, the minions, like the minion in the movie. So that kind of, yeah, that, that's our uh, endearing term for our, you know, little program scripts that we just call them the minions and it's stuck. Um, so if you think okay. about it, the, the robotic uh, process automation is like those minions um, executing and over, overseeing the, uh, the steps of a workflow, okay? And another part of that that ties into the business process uh, management is the diagram. If you look at, you know, if you Google BPM, you will immediately see the diagram of the workflow. And that's a big part of it because, you know, once the automation itself is not as useful if you as the owner of the uh, uh, company or, uh, or operation cannot see the workflow. So BPM and, you know, uh, robotic process automation combine is actually what we are talking about today. Yeah, it sounds like a very complicated thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like what, I mean, what essentially the end goal is, is to have a, mi a middle ground where you have some automations, but you also have some real work that you can't automate, right? Because I think a yeah. lot of times people have this 
magical vision of automating everything and hoping that they can just press play and that'll be it. Um, So could you, uh, could you just talk a little bit about the difference between like automating everything and what kinds of things you have to think about when you are creating those automations to make sure things don't fall through the cracks? Right. Oh, yeah, I'll try to be, you know, to put it in a simpler term. Um, to me, the, the, the term automation does not mean, you know, hit play and then sit back, right? That, that works well when you want to listen to music, right? But if you want to manage 400 houses, that does not work that well, especially if you have, you know, 1,000 houses. Um, so the, the, I think the easiest way to think about this is that by the term automation, okay, yeah, there are two types of automation. The first one is that you, auto, you try to automate the steps of the workflow where it makes sense. And the second part is to automate the notification, the alert, and the, uh, um, how do you say it, the, uh, the broadcast of these steps, you know, to the personnel that is supposed to execute them. So one thing that we have to get rid of is the notion that automate, workflow automation means everything done by computer. That makes no sense at all. Um, the workflow for especially for property management companies, um, has some of the steps cannot be done by computer. It has to be done by a real human being. Um, we can talk about, you know, a couple of examples later down the road. But uh, um, so that's, that, to me, that's the clearest way to think about automation. Yeah, and I feel like that's what I've seen in a lot of the processes that the property managers we work with try to do, and I think they do understand that, which is good and which is why I'm glad we're talking about it, but just the idea that you can automate triggers to remind you to execute things, that's even a huge help because I think a lot of times that's where things end up falling short. So if you have that process in place, it could go a really long way. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's why you know automation is not only automating the step themselves, but also automating the you know kind of like an orchestration of the teams that is involved. You know, um, for, you know to execute the workflow. So, would you say that automation is for everyone? Like, are there reasons why a property management company, you know, may be you know not fit for automation? That, that's that's a good question. Um, to me, this the the automation, the workflow automation, if implemented correctly, it will help the company to be able to scale up, basically to grow. Uh, because when when you have uh, let's say you know 100, 200 you know uh, properties, you that is the time for you to to start thinking about the workflow and start to uh, document what needs to happen, right? Because when, if, you, if you start doing that, when you already have 400, you know, 500, 600, you will be too busy to, to put out fires, you know, to even start doing that. So start early. And then I think the workflow automation is applicable as long as it is understood that, you know, there are steps that are uh, uh, suitable for computers to do it. And there are steps that remains in the domain of human being. Um, just an example. Let, 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 let's, use, let's use an example. Um, the first example will be easy, like um, changing the, the locks on the, on, the, on the apartment or on the house, right? Um, no matter how good a program I can make, you know, there's no way it can change the locks, right? Uh, so that, that one still has to be done by the maintenance team. And it has to be done correctly with the, the proper documentation. So six months down the road, you know, the tenant does not come back saying, hey, you guys never change uh, my keys. Um, which is one of the horror stories that I hear from an actual property management <laughs> company. Yeah. So uh, that, illus- that illustrates the, uh, the, the need for that. Uh, the second type of uh, steps that are, uh, you know, only for human being is, you know, uh, building relationship with the tenants and the owners, right? That one is something that you cannot automate uh, with the computers, no matter what. But you can automate the orchestration of that by giving access to the property manager, uh, um, you know, uh, owner's relationship, however you want to call it, right? By give, giving them the, the right information at the right time and alerting them at the right time, that is the value to me you know, of the workflow automation. Right, to really, to really put automation in place, and, and I think that's what you're getting at, um, you really do, and it's really a healthy thing, and that's what I, we were trying to get at with doing those blogs early on, 
was it's very, very helpful for you to have some kind of graphical representation of your workflow because it helps you begin to understand how things are moving and what's happening and step back and see all of the pieces in place. And you know, from my perspective, I mean, my, you guys know my background yeah. is in consulting. And um, for a long, long time, um, I did a lot of business process consulting. And what I saw was a lot of people selling kind of the magic bullet of automation. Um, and, and, and the automation was good automation and the software that was coming in and the technology, a lot of it was excellent. However, there was this gap between mm -hmm what the company knew about how they did things and what the company knew about how they did process and the automation that they wanted to put in place right. and what, what the what the buyer didn't know what the company buying the automation didn't really understand was that there was this initial step that they needed to go through to really understand how the work was moving around and i'm right. i'm wondering what your thoughts are on that yeah um, that 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 is important but at the same time it can also be um, uh, help or aided by by the by the tool makers, right? Uh, so, for example, if we uh, let's say I, you know, uh, I'm talking to a property management company, and the first questions that I ask them is like, do you have currently some sort of documentation of your workflow, right? Um, you know, the the answer ranges from yes, I do, to not really, right? <laughs> and <laughs> and and the the you know the, the the not really has a lot of hesitation behind it. I can tell, right? Um, because and then and then I said okay, and then I show them the graphical representation of workflow that our uh, that that our product has. So and 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 I said, do you see this diagram? And and they said, yes, I do see that diagram. I like it. And and he said, I can make that diagram myself. Number one, right? And so what is the value? So I said to him, the diagram, you can make it at one time. But what happens if the workflow changes? What happens when your business changes? If a business is running, it will change. Otherwise, it's dead. Right? So it's, just, it's, just, it's just a logical thing to, to explain. So then they say, oh, okay, so what, what is it that you are offering that is not like a, a static diagram? So as we said, we, the way we think about it is that the tool maker can help by maintaining the, 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 the diagram of the workflow that actually you know, does the automation as it goes. So therefore, any automation that is done and agreed upon is following that diagram, which means that diagram becomes a life, a living document. It's right. no longer a static picture. That's right. um, so I think there's, a, there's some ways for the tool makers to be able to help the property managers to, to you know, to, to right. work on the idea. Yeah. yeah, and it's a great point, right? To your point, right? Step A, start understanding your processes, start putting them down, start understanding how they move, but yeah. understand to your point that they're alive, right? And they're yeah. gonna shift and they're gonna move and you need to pay attention. So having a tool like this, where you have a living tool where you can easily shift and then have that reflected in the automation, that's, that's exactly, that's, that's the optimal. And that that's probably helps identify too what parts of the process aren't necessarily working. Like, I don't know, if you're using an automation tool, um, would would there be tools that you can look at and say, oh, okay, I keep hitting a snag in this part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's been skipped three times. Now that's an indicator that we need to go change the process flow. Will automation tool tools help with that? Yep, the, that, that is a very good point and also a key component of, of, of what I think as a successful you know, uh, automa workflow automation tool. So a workflow automation tool has to allow you to see your workflow, number two, to automate your workflow, number three, see, uh, you know, to tell you what happened. Yeah. What happened, what happened to the workflow, right? Because if I, if I give you a tool and say basically this one will show your workflow and it will run your workflow, but after that you are in the dark. You don't know what actually happened, right? That will reduce the usefulness, usefulness of the tool tremendously. So. To your point, that that is exactly part of the uh, uh, component of, of a good uh, you know workflow automation tool is almost like an audit log, almost like an audit uh, that you can always go back. And there are many ways to 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 present the uh, the the property manager uh, uh, you know what happened. It could be by property, it could be by uh, personnel, it could be by team. You know, it could be. A dashboard that shows you, you know, which, you know, is there like uh, staff that are stuck somewhere for a week, 
three days, five days, whatever, right? So there are many ways to do that, but you are absolutely correct. That is uh, an, an important component. And so um, since we're talking about automation tools, you know, I bet a lot of property managers out there use Zapier for like tiny, you know, sets of tasks because we hear that a lot. Um, struggle with Zapier is it always like sometimes would hit snap and you restart and it just works. Yeah, yeah. And then you just don't know. Like it just says, you know, this task was paused and then you're like, I can't really under, I don't really understand. Sometimes I go like investigate and it like shows like input and then the, a bunch of code and then output and like, okay, restart and it just works. And I'm like, if it worked, then why did it stop the first time? And yeah. so, you know, you, you talked about the importance of having a tool that actually shows you what happened when the mm -hmm. automation was triggered. But mm -hmm. in that case, for example, like I, it showed me like what happened, but I didn't understand. Like, mm -hmm. are there other things about the tool that property managers should know about before making a decision? Yeah, that, that, that's a good, that's a good point. If, if, the, the, yeah, for a technical, you know, background person like me, right? There, there are, there are, I, I, I recognize that there are things that the computer can can you know display that would make no sense at all to a normal human being okay this just doesn't make sense um, but <laughs> yeah the, so the uh, the better tool for property managers to, to consider are the tools that actually speak the language of property managers and uh, again in this regard the tool makers you know can, can help because the tool makers can learn uh, what are the the how you know how property managers see things? Um, like in this regard, you know we are we are very very fortunate and blessed that uh, you know our clients and our uh, uh, the people who who started you know to to, to help us develop you know, our product uh, really are property managers and they are very articulate in being able to teach me you know how they see things and. And to me, that that's that's huge because it, 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 it is reflected that if you see the the, the reporting or the audit audit log screen of a you know automation a workflow automation tool, and you cannot understand what it is, then that is a problem, right? Uh, when it tells you what had happened, it has to say it in a way that the property managers uh, keep track of things. I think that's one of the cool things about using an automation tool compared to trying to figure out all of these third party tools together too. Like mm -hmm. for example, Marie and I are both very tech savvy, but even to us, sometimes we look at Zapier and we are have to spend quite some time doing some research to figure it out. So what I'm kind of hearing from this is you probably wouldn't recommend that a property manager tries to figure out how to use Zapier, has to ha tries to figure out how to use webhooks or whatever it is that would help integrate a number of tools to automate their lives, you recommend using, using a, a tool maker that can do all of that for them and make it easy for them to understand. Yeah, and, and, and I, have a, I have a different reasoning for, for agreeing with what you said. Um, the different reasoning is this. Um, property management companies, or property managers, right? They're, they're, they're busy people, right? And they have to already uh, manage hundreds of properties and whatever um, that comes with. So in addition to that, you know, do they really have the time, the capacity, the energy to be able to also maintain the automation itself? Right. That is really the question that I ask my, um, you know, uh, the, the property management companies that I talk to. So, it, it, you know, I just, um, you know, a short story, you know, this morning I was talking to a property management company, my newest uh, uh, client um, from Indiana, and, and he said, um, how come there's not, you know, a lot of people that, that has done this within the property management uh, community? And I said, because it requires two different uh, sets of discipline, right? You have to know the system and workflow and, you know, kind of like Michael, um, business process management consultant, you know, so knows a lot of things, you know, how to make uh, 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 workflow uh, work efficiently, improve whatever. But that skill set may not be uh, uh, possessed by property managers. So if they, even if they do, right, they still have 24 hours a day. So I always right. say, you know, if you have 48 hours a day, unlike me, right, then you can probably do both, you know, workflow management and property management, you know, at the same time. But I have to choose. I will not be able to 
uh, run a property management company and run a software company. That makes no sense at all. Yeah, exactly. So, like we can't yeah. we can't run a marketing campaign and fix all the integrations for the marketing campaign <laughs> at the same time. Which we have tried to do. Which we have tried to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, we do that. We get that at two a.m. But it's it's funny because I I feel like it goes back to that you can't you can't just press play like music statement because. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people think, and it goes back to that people thinking. And I, we thought we, that we think we can do that too. Yeah. So, because like with the Zapier, it's visual. It's pretty easy to build an automation it's kind of on fun. Zapier. It's fun. <laughs> like sometimes, like hey Brittany, let's you know, carve out carve out an hour. Let's just build this you know complicated thing that we can mm-hmm. automate, and then it's all good when we hit start. But then. We just discover a month later that like it's not working and the client's like, what happened? And we're like, we don't know. Right. We need like we need to 48 research. hours. To, yeah. Like, so it's like <laughs> you need somebody to be able to be to, efficient. You need to have somebody that knows what they're doing to be efficient um, and make it worth worth the investment that you make for, for trying to automate stuff like this. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a really good question. And, and I, I, I wanted to, to, to ask it here. Um, kind of in your view, um, what's the best uh, what's the best profile for going into a property management company? In your view, what would be the best profile in terms of readiness for for workflow automation in this situation? Where you know, the, in your in your eyes, how much have they done? What are they ready? Do they have do they have to have all their processes documented? I don't think so. But maybe I would think from your perspective, it would be, it would be helpful if they had some set of written down. They understood some of their processes. They understood how information moved through the company. But I'd like to get a sense from you of what do you think is the, like the optimal profile? Yeah. Um, yeah. So th- there are two views on this one, right? I mean, number one, I, I, I literally enjoy, you know, talking to property managers and uh, with the different set of readiness or profile, as you say, Michael, um, the, there are some of them that have no documentation at all. And when I ask, you know, um, how many departments do you have? You know, who handles the sales? Who handles the marketing? Who handles the tenant? Who handles the, the, the owner? And they say, uh, it's uh, Thomas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I said, uh, you know, number one, poor Thomas. Number two, you know, what happened if Thomas retired, right? Um, so, or Susan, you know, uh, same thing. Yeah, so, so we need the process flow for that. It's just Thomas. <laughs> I know, exactly. So, so, so. Yeah, so if we can just automate Thomas, then we, we're fine, right? Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the profile, um, I think the, the, it, it is, here's a very good recipe, okay? For if, if you're a property management company, um, learn what are the responsibilities in your uh, operation according to the phases of during the you know, leasing life cycle, okay? Um, who is in charge for tenant moving in? Who's in charge for tenant moving out? Who's uh, in charge for the accounting? Who's in charge, whatever. And then from these responsibilities, create your team, okay? Accountability, then, right? Understanding accountability. Exactly, exactly. And then uh, a good tool, a good automation tool should readily accept those uh, teams as and responsibilities, right? Um, because that's that's a that's the best way to start to document your work, uh, uh, your workflow is when you have a good idea on who is doing what at any given time. Then you can start to say, okay, this step belongs to that box. This step belongs to this box, and then you start drawing the lines from the boxes. That's how the process of thinking, right? So once you talk about this to the property management companies uh, owners, they they said. They, they they get it. They get it. They're they're really really intelligent people. Obviously, um, being able to you know manage that many properties, um, but they have to to get to get that. So I think that is a good profile and a good introduction at the same time um, to open a discussion with the property management company to help them. So a strong sense, a deep sense of accountability for for individual tasking across the organization. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. So. Even if it's Thomas doing everything, Thomas has to be sure. in like 15, 20 boxes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. I, I was, well, yeah, I was being facetious when I said, you know, it's just one box. I mean, the reality is you may look at Thomas from a workflow standpoint and realize I'm not being efficient. Right. Right. Everything, right. You know, if every, just like we discovered, right, four and a half over the last year and a half, 
right? Dividing out certain pieces made more sense, even though yeah. for a long time, everything was consolidated in individuals, you know, breaking those things out actually made us more efficient. Yeah, and it helped us identify, it's exactly what we're talking about, that helped us identify things that we could automate or, or tasks that we could pass off to other people where we didn't need the director of marketing and the director of client getting in the middle of a task yeah. that could just be a handoff between two departments. We were yeah. just hurting ourselves because we thought we needed to until we saw it on paper. And it did yeah. not make sense. Yeah. yeah. And to Will's point, I think the, the, the big point is it's um, separating out by outcome, right? Accountability yes. and outcome. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are you accountable for? What outcome are you accountable for in, in customer service and account management? What's the outcome that you're accountable for versus what are you accountable for on the delivery side or that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So being clear about that is going to be so critical to understanding how work is going to flow through the, yeah. through the company. Yeah. If I may, if I may add, you know, uh, a little bit to, to what, what you guys are uh, you know, saying, I'm nodding because I, I'm agreeing. So um, the, um, Go back to Thomas, okay? Go back to Thomas. Um, so after we create the workflow diagram for that company, okay? So we start to see six different departments that are, you know, uh, handing off tasks and steps to each other, basically, right? Now, in reality, for the time being, for the short, you know, duration, Thomas may be the one doing those steps still. Right. And I told them that's OK. It's not that you have suddenly, you know, once you adopt this, you know, workflow automation uh, uh, effort, you now have to, you know, suddenly hire six people that, that <laughs> you know, that, that may not be possible. Right. For, for some companies. Right. So uh, Thomas may still be doing that. But Thomas now knows that when he's done this, he has to go back to the tool saying, I have done it. I have done it. I've done it. And eventually when Thomas retire or somebody else come in, they can already say it. Do what that do what Thomas did, which is already using the system and the, yeah. and the product. That's that's how. Um, so the product, the the workflow automation product, um, is also useful for training. If you think about it, right? Once you document it and make the documentation live, that becomes your training tool. Yeah, I think that's super powerful because. You know, um, with property management, right? As we all know, property managers are very busy and. Part of the things that they have to think about when they're growing is when to hire people, um, you know, the cadence, when to fire people, but then also training. It's like not really spoken about. And then once they're trained, you have to kind of make sure that they're not just, you know, ignoring certain things that you train them on. And it sounds like having a clear way to document what needs to get done not only is helpful to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do, but mm -hmm. as you said, transitioning, if someone retires or, you know, facetiously, someone gets hit by a bus. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay, well, you can give this workflow to someone and you can yeah. still, you know, continue on with business versus, sorry, Thomas moved to a different <laughs> day. You'll have to wait for two weeks while we train someone new. <laughs> well, yeah, and the, yeah. Tra the training aspect's just huge because if you think about it, in the property management industry for sure, but I'm sure in all industries, you hire people because you need help and you want weight lifted off of the workload that you have. Yeah. But in order to get there, you have to sacrifice more of your time to get that person caught up to speed. So anything that you can do to make the process easier, yep. you want to do it. Hugely beneficial. Yeah. 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 That's um, Okay, can I ask the dark side now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to ask the dark side because I'm sure you know about this too. Um, so we talked about kind of the positive profile. What's what's the negative profile? In other words, you and I know, right? You've done this work for, for a number of years. I've certainly done the work for a number of years. You guys have been around it. When When, when is it going to be difficult or when is it going to be at risk? So you're coming into a company and it's just going to be harder. Maybe maybe they're, they're just not ready for it. They're overwhelmed. Um, or they, or, and I think this happens a lot. They think you're the magic sauce. They're just gonna gonna give it to you, and all of their, just like we said before, they're gonna sit back in the easy chair, and everything's just gonna flow through the they're system. Like, Will's got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's worthwhile to talk yeah. a little bit about that. Like, what's the what's yeah. the difficult profile? Yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to draw from my experience now talking to you know so many PM uh, you know PM companies, and I think one of the um, I, w- I wouldn't say red flag necessarily, but it is it, it, it's something that to be aware of is when the um, when the owner of the company is not yet ready to commit to uh, you know to 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 or or sometimes they don't see it yet that um, they, they said that they need automation because automation looks kind of cool or sound kind of cool, right? They want yeah. that, they want that, but you can kind of tell exactly, you know, not, not exactly, but you know, a um, little bit of, um, the, the, not necessarily the tone, but the, 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 the topic shifted to, to, to like, you know, I just want to hand this over to someone and, 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 yeah. and, and, and that's it, right? Yeah, and, I'm really glad you said that because I think that, I really think that's it. And I, I think it's super yeah. important. There's a, there is a there is an aspect of this that it's it's going to involve you and and you've got to make exactly. some effort for an outcome. Exactly. So what I started to ask them is that are you uh, you know uh, it, it's good if you are invested in this effort, right? Yes. It's it's good that you will that, that you start it and you bring your teams. It, you know the the software, I mean the tool, no matter how good it is, will not be able to convince the team. To, to, to use it automatically. <laughs> That's right. We are, we are resistant to change. Every one of us, right? Sure. Um, I get mad when, uh, you know, Flickr changes something with my, you know, photos online, you know. Oh, no, when do I have to do this? Right? Everybody is like that. So the, the owner has to show their willingness uh, to be invested in this effort and, you know, to be responsible for the uh, usage of the system properly. And... And the way we, you know, on, on here on Next we try to, 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 to safeguard ourselves around that is that we have a regular meeting with our uh, uh, um, customers, right? So the person that we talk to, usually the owner, usually the, you know, uh, general manager or, you know, whoever, you know, is that person still there? Do they still remember what we talked about last week? You know? I'm not, sorry, last month. <laughs> Forget last week. Um, so... Do they still remember? Are, are are we still on board? You know, how are the teams accepting the thing? Uh, the thing? We we can monitor it from from behind. We can tell, you know, if the team is actively using the system or the, the or, or nobody touches the system, which is the that's the red flag to me, right? That's so nice. I think Michael, to your point, the, the the profile, the dark side of the profile is 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 really with the with the human aspect of it, the the owner. The team member, you know, if one of them or both are in trouble because they don't listen to each other, there's no amount of automation can help. That's right. There's an investment, and that that's the main thing to me that I saw is is and and when I you know the, the more I consulted and the more I got you know um, uh, deeper into consulting and delivering large business process automation um, projects, um, that's what it really became all about is the human capital of getting people invested in the process and the whys getting them attached to the outcome and understanding the benefit to them where they tap in personally. And once you had that investment, the systems automation and the overlay of the automation was so much easier, so much easier um, because you had this, this, this passion and commitment for the outcome. And um, if I, if I may add in this particular industry that is, you know, property management industry, it is slightly easier for us uh, to to be able as as consultant and tool makers, right? It's slightly easier because things happen daily, often, right? So we can immediately know when things are, when the system is being neglected, nobody using it. If we monitor it, we know, you know, we can know pretty quickly. Um, In my other uh, industry, you know, it's not that easy because things sometimes move slowly and so it is really hard to tell whether this is people not using the system or it's just the way it is, right, in that industry. So property management industry, I think, is very, uh, you know, it fits like a glove, like, like a, you know, I like to, uh, like to say, to the workflow uh, automation because things are, you know, moving rapidly and we yeah. can help them. Yeah. The so. yeah, I, I had a follow-up question. So we talk about the importance of um, the human element to make an automation work. There has to be buy-in from the owner of the company, the team members. So how would you navigate the situation wherein the owner of the company is fully invested, but the team isn't because they think automation will replace them or their job? Um, yes, yes, yes. Great question. Um, 
there is not an easy answer to that one. The only the only story that I can relate to that one is um, a, a testimony from from my from one of our clients, uh -huh. and they said that uh, first of all they they didn't go with the uh, you know full automation. They just ordered some dashboard you know to us uh, from us um, dashboards. And this, the, once we create the dashboard, they display the dashboard, you know, uh, around the office, right, in big screen somewhere, you know. And one of the one of the story, funny stories, that they put it next to a restroom, you know, the restroom. So because <laughs> so everyone people, has to go pass through. Yeah, people cannot avoid passing through the dashboard, and eventually, even the most you know non-attentive person will start to pay attention. And after doing that for a couple of months, the owner of the company told me that. Um, their meetings has gone shorter because, you know, the minute they come to the meeting, everybody kind of knows the numbers that matters, you know, to the company and it's shown on the dashboard. Okay. Now that's only from the, you know, an anecdote from the dashboard side, but from the workflow side, it's, it, the impact is, 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 is larger um, because now the maintenance person, okay, the maintenance person who used to always have to be on their toes because they don't know where they're going today. You know, which 20 of these houses I need to clean up, I need to replace the key, I need to, you know, repair the fence, whatever. Thing. They're always, you know, edgy on that one. Now, with the, with, with the products such as ours, um, they get a notification you know, to start the day, saying basically today you have these five houses, one to rekey or two to rekey, you know, three, you know, to, to, to get it make ready, you know, for, for showing and that kind of stuff. So by, by, by showing the, the, the people, the team, you know, how this tool actually helps them and release from them the, you know, the burdens that are not meant to be, you know, to be in their brain anyway, right? So the, the replacement aspect here is not to replace them as a, a valuable, you know, team member, but to replace the grunt work, the manual task, the remembering, you know, the monitoring, all of those are, you know, better you know done by computers and you know lower cost also so to me a very important uh, message here is that to the team members not to the owners right to the team members is that the a proper and a good workflow automation system will actually let them be more effective in what they are good at doing instead of getting bogged down you know having to you know enter the data again and again and again and again and then once you make a mistake you know every single thing every you know 100 things that you did right is forgotten by everyone and everybody's you know going for you for that one mistake that you did so but it's a, it's a, it's a really it's a really good point um, sort of that the conversion of the human element is really important to your to your question um, um, in larger um, bigger scale business process automation they have something called change management and change management is simply about the human element, the conversion of the human element aspect. After you're going to do this workflow automation, some jobs are going to shift, some things are going to shift, and you come in and you take a look. And even at this scale, I'm sure you do it naturally um, in your work, um, but essentially, and we did it here kind of intuitively, when we're shifting things around, there's a lot of explaining that needs to happen and sort of getting, um, I think the key thing is it's the same thing, really. It's getting people attached to an outcome. Yeah. Really, we're, aim we're all aimed at the same outcome, which is the betterment of the company. Um, that's where the source of our jobs are and being effective in our jobs. And so um, if you can get people focused there, um, then, then chances are you're going to have a better opportunity for success. Yeah, and you know, my key takeaway here is that um, as much as human beings want this idea that automation can solve all our problems, you know, you hit play and things just happen. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Like to your point, right? Um, it happened for Will Smith in oh, wow. the movie I Robot. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. I have hopes. Okay. okay. No. Yeah. I mean. But to your point, yeah. And now like he's a you genius. Always. Yeah. So now he's a genius. Good out things out are happening. To <laughs> Um, but for property management companies, unless you're, you know, Will Smith, yeah. <laughs> um, it sounds like this idea that workflow automations or automation in general can just, you know, fix everything in a snap of a finger or click of a button. It's actually the opposite. It's like you actually need to do more work before you implement the automation to make sure it actually works. It's like pay off later, right? You do the grunt work mm -hmm. now. You have to think about your business as a whole. You have to actually 
you know, look under the hood, figure out how everything's working. And then that's the only time you can even begin to think about automating because only then can you figure out what makes sense to automate and what doesn't make sense to automate. So I think it's a misnomer, like automation. It's like, no, there's still work involved. I think that's my key takeaway. Well, it, Absolutely. Th that actually reminded me of one more thing that I don't, we didn't dive too much into when we were talking about the dark side, but I've seen people try to automate things that they shouldn't try to automate. And it's not necessarily that it doesn't get done. It's that it doesn't get done at the right time. Mm -hmm. For example, we work with a number of people um, and help them set up their sales CRMs and they'll want to automate a certain email. Um, but then the email goes out when and a follow-up email goes out when they've already spoken to the person, but they hadn't had time to go into their CRM and mark that they'd spoke to them yet. So I think that's another instance or example of a time when you shouldn't automate things and keep the human yeah. element. Yeah, I, I have a, a worse example. Someone was like a property manager was on the phone with a lead and then an, e an automated email came out like, I could catch you on the phone. When would be a good time to talk? Like, um, <laughs> I just got this email from you. We're talking right now. Like that was so embarrassing. Of course, yeah. property manager was mad, but at the same time, it's like, there's a limit. To you have to find a good balance. Yeah, you have to find a good balance. <laughs> That 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 uh, you know, I kind of touch on that point in, in the in the beginning, and that's so important to to realize that um, the human element cannot be taken out. That is not the goal of workflow automation at all. The goal of you know work, uh, workflow automation, the, uh, a good one, is to let the human element shine. Actually, right. So, I, this is a real conversation with one of our with our clients. They said. Um, our tenants think that our property manage, managers are uh, gruff. You know, they they are they are not nice. You know, they're not kind, right? And they, you know, they don't you know uh, pick up their phone when they want to talk. I mean, people you know we all like to be uh, you know uh, taken care of, basically. So um, so I said these steps that automates the email going out to the to the tenants. You may want to revisit that, right? And have it instead to become a manual step for your property managers to give them the opportunity to build the relationship with the tenant. So that you know that that becomes something that ha is helpful to the business as a you know as a whole, not just uh, uh, you know not just uh, the technical side. Yeah, and maybe there are other things that they didn't think to automate that should be automated. Like for example, for the property managers. The first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, I want to automate the email communication to tenants because there are just too many of them. And then what the property managers keep doing manually are things that can actually be automated, like tracking, for example, mm -hmm. which houses mm -hmm. need to be turned over, which yeah. houses need to be shown where. They're like, oh, they need to do that because it's a property manager. Like actually flip it. Like the relationship mm -hmm. building should be the human, the tracking, yeah. the scheduling yeah. should be the machine. But Absolutely. After you make, the, after you have that insight, it feels obvious, but it's actually not as obvious. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so, do you have any like parting words to our property management um, listeners out there regarding automation as a whole, workflows as a whole? Um, parting words, right? Um, to me, it's just a matter of. Um, First, you have to decide. You know, do you are you at the point where you you want your operation to grow, right? That 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 is the number one question. If you are happy where you are right now, right, and uh, your teams are working correctly, you have procedures in place, everybody is accountable. You guys are like family uh, uh, when it's not fighting with each other. But you know, it's it's good. Um, then maybe you. You know, it's not the time yet for you to investigate that, investigate workflow automation. But once your mind says that we need to grow, or we are growing anyway, we don't have a choice. People keep calling us and keep, you know, uh, want us to manage, uh, you know, their their properties. So, in if you're in that trajectory of growing, you need to investigate this. If not for anything, it's for your own visibility of how actually your operation right now is is, you know. What does it look like, right? Um, all the things that we said about is, you know, we have to know the capacity, like what, you know, Michael's point, you know, the capacity, you know, what, where are the boundaries of the things right now that is hindering 
the operation, uh, where is it and who are the responsible party when supposed to, to do what? Um, that's all beneficial. That you know, the, the, you know that part is beneficial whether you eventually use the product, uh, the the tool or not. That part is you know useful. So do that if you have in mind uh, uh, the 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 plan to grow the operation. Words of wisdom, guys. Yeah, yeah, very well said. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for you know being our guest today, talking about workflow automation and you know things that even we didn't really know yeah. to think about um, regarding this topic. And so, um, where can people find you if they have additional questions about this or just want to talk to you? Um, they can click this button right here. No, I'm, I'm thinking I'm in YouTube. Um, I've always wanted to do that. I never. Uh, <laughs> nice. so, um, our product is called Bionic PM. Uh, it's bionicpm.com is the website. And we are also uh, uh, try to, to use Facebook. And so uh, we are there at, you know, I think it's Bionic PMC, uh, at Bionic PMC, or just type in Bionic PM. Uh, you will find the, the, the page there. And um, if you go to the website, there is a form there that, that, that says basically, you know, I would like to know more about Bionic PM. And, you know, I, I ask, you know, how many properties are you managing right now? So I can know, you know, how much do I, what, what kind of introductions should I be, you, you know, using basically. And some people have used that. Um, so other than that, you know, email me. My, my email is will at nextcoder.com. That, that's easy enough, I guess. So, um, and, you know. Thanks to, the, to you guys. You guys are the, the, the marketing and the media people. So you guys are reaching down to me and helping me to do something that I'm not familiar with. So I'm appreciative of that. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks for spending the time. Yeah. It was really fun talking to you. Yes, it was really fun to talk to you all. Thank you. Thank you. So to our listeners, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. As usual, let us know what other topics you want to hear about. We love getting your comments. And again, if you have any questions about marketing-related stuff, contact us at 4 and Half. Bye. Bye.